Good evening, everyone. I have my new friend here, Catherine Davis. How are you, Catherine? I'm doing really well, thank you. How Good. Are you? Thanks. I'm excited first to get to know you, and then we want you to tell us all about your new movie, which is Welcome to Valentine. It premieres this Saturday, Hallmark, and also on the uh, W in Canada, yes. 8 o'clock, right? 8 o'clock Eastern time, which would be 7 for us Central. It's the new one for this weekend. I love it. I'm really excited about it. I am too. I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also always a little bit nervous beforehand as well. Um, it's, it's always just very surreal, like when it's sort of leading up to something and I'm like, ah, you know, and it's it's actually nice because it premieres because I'm I live in Canada. It premieres the same night, the same time, just on our W network instead. So I'm very right. excited for all my Canadian pals to be able to watch it at the same time. Which is nice because that doesn't always happen. So you can watch and live tweet. Are you going to live tweet? I don't have Twitter. Oh, that's right. I, I remember learning that. <laughs> we can live tweet for you. And Markian said he's going to live tweet. And so we'll live tweet? I yeah. might do maybe some live um, Instagram things, but I don't know. Sometimes I, I would think whenever I'm watching something for the first time, because I've not seen very much of this film, just a little bit of what I did in voiceover. Um, I probably pull very strange faces. I'm sort of like, <laughs> never I'm watching it the first time. Um, so I don't know. It's just by nature. I mean, I'm getting better. I used to, when I was first seeing myself on uh, like a TV screen, I would run out of the room. So now, you know, I'm getting better, but I still sort of like, I'm always working. I'm always learning and being like, okay, that was, oh, okay, that worked out. Or, you know, oh, it constantly, I'm like a student. I'm constantly at study in terms of um, acting and, you know, learning along the way, so. I think that all of us, no matter what our career is, like I'm a teacher and when the pandemic hit um, and we were virtual, I made sure everything was recorded because if the child, for whatever reason, because so many people were ill, couldn't be there, they would be able to watch it. And I also like to record it because, I, I mean, the parents could pop in and watch it too. And I saw myself and I was like, oh, I said that, I did that. Oh, oh, you know, like it's it's good to, to see yourself because you don't always know exactly, like in your mind, you know what you, you're wanting to say or do. So I'm sure that's the same with you. So it's always good to watch yourself. And he, even if you were a lawyer or the person who was, I don't know, at the cashier register, I think it would be a good idea. You gotta learn your poker faces. Yes. Because if you're playing at a table and you got like, you know, a big big amount in the middle, you gotta have your poker. You gotta know what your um your tail uh, your tails are, right? Right. Yes. Poker. So we we um I always find that once a new a new movie comes out, people fall in love with the character and then they love the actress or the actor and they want to know more. And so if you could, we're going to talk a little bit about your career journey, but someone already is noticing something. So I'm going to put it up there. Um, Christina is, says, I hear a little of an accent and I love it and that you're so pretty. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christina. You're making me blush. Um, mm -hmm. You are correct. I do have a slight accent. Um, so I'm originally from the southwest of England, from a city called Bath. So mm -hmm. my parents both from the UK. I was born there, grew up between there and Canada. So that's why I have the strange hybrid sort of not quite there. <laughs> not sure where she's from accent now. Now, am I correct in understanding, I think, that they filmed some of the movie or uh, Bridgerton in Bath? Is that true? That is absolutely correct. Yes, oh. I just, one, it would have been the last time I was visiting uh, back in 2019. I just finished working on a Netflix show mm -hmm. and then they arrived in Bath and they were said, oh, there's a big Netflix series here right now. It's called Bridgerton. It has Julie Andrews in it. So I thought they learned later she was the voiceover. And we walked up to a like, local pub to, to get dinner for the night. And there they were, four lovely chaps on horseback. And um, it was um, Roger, which I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Right, yeah. I'm um, the actor that plays George. And... Um, two others who were the stunt doubles. And so we saw them, they like, doffed their hats and everything and they were in between takes and it was just, it was mesmerizing. Like first off seeing the hometown that I'd known. And of course you're surrounded by history when you're there, it's a sure. city and 
dates back to the Roman period. But then when you see I mean, beautiful horses, handsome looking men all done up and decked up and then the, the streets are covered in, you know, gravel to cover, you know, the yellow lines and everything. It was pretty magical to watch that. So. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even think of that. They would have to put the gravel down. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm getting behind this. I'm going to have to share that on my Bridgerton page. <laughs> yeah, and they shows a lot of shots from Bath, so. Yeah, and, and as it continues, I mean, you should see if you could get, you know, a spot on on there. Would love to. Um, even they have a prequel that starts pretty soon that surrounds about Queen, uh, Queen Charlotte. And I was like... How did I how did I not hear about this? Well, you want to know what that's funny because you could have even played um the the younger version of Queen Charlotte. And I saw her beautiful costume and as a, a shot of her climbing up the wall. And I was like, ah, 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 how how did I miss out on that? I didn't see any auditions for it. So I'm a little bit bummed in that way. But hey, who knows? Maybe there's more seasons to spin off. Lillian, I mean, is it Lillian? I'm sorry. No, Jen, we'll come back to you. It's Lillian. Lillian says, I'll be in the UK in May and we may plan to visit Bath. I'm excited for it. Is there something, you know, there's always touristy things, but since you're actually from there, is there something like maybe a place or a pub or something that you would recommend Lillian visit? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, if you are a Bridgerton fan, Lillian, they do actually have Bridgerton tours now. Um, in terms of Bath, everything is very walkable. Um, for the prettiest part is sort of like the Royal Crescent. So it's a how um, semicircle of Georgian houses, all five story houses, oh. and it connects onto a row called Brock Street. And then there's what's called the Circus, which is big round, pretty much like big roundabout with a huge oak tree in the middle. And then it's surrounded by the same sort of Georgian five story houses. And from the sky, it actually looks like a key. So it's got like the crescent and then the street and then a circular part that looks like a key. And um, it's beautiful. I mean, the, the architecture there is stunning and that area particularly. And if you walk down, there's a street called Gay Street, walk down to the end of it, that's where Jane Austen used to live. And there's a Jane Austen museum there as well. Oh, all right, Lillian. I hope you heard all that. Now, now I'm going to Bridgerton, but also Jane Austen. A quite That's a few okay. that there. I love it. That is beautiful. Thank you. So we 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 know that you were now. How old were you when you moved from Bath? So I've been back and forth a few times. So I was um, originally five when I moved to Canada, mm -hmm. and then we moved back to England when I was eight, and then back again when I was thirteen. Okay, so, so I could see why you know the accent would be. <laughs> So he was a very stubborn little kid when I went back to, you know, um, I'd gone to a school that was pretty much like Hogwarts. So we had yes, like school yes. houses and it was a beautiful building. They actually wanted to film Harry Potter there as well. Ooh. And when I started going to, and it was an all girls school, school uniforms, everything. And then suddenly I was like, no offense, but in co-ed and you know, I'm stuck with smelly boys and there's no uniforms. And I remember saying to my mom, I was like, I want to go back to boarding school. Like, um, cause my school was a boarding school as well. Um, I was a day girl, but I wanted to go back to my school. And my mom said, don't be silly. Don't be ridiculous. And such as that, I uh, ended up staying in Canada. But I, I never wanted to really lose my accent growing up. Um, I didn't really want to conform with what was normal with teenagers at the time. I was always like a little bit rebellious in terms of not wanting to do like to fall into what everyone else loved to do. I was like, no, I'm going to be different. <laughs> I'm not going to like it. That's so, okay. That's the drama um, in you. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I was just like, Spice Girls? No. <laughs> 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 it always had to be the, the, the opposite. Yeah. Conform ever. Now, um, what, when you, I was, I heard, I watched, I can't even get my words out today. What in the world? <laughs> I watched some of the podcasts. I normally don't do it, but I was so interested when I started to read up on you. I was like, I have to see, like I wanted to hear your accent and, and see because I it surprised me. Looking at your pictures, I, I wouldn't have thought that. I, I'm thinking Southern down home United States girl. And I'm like, oh, she's got Love an English it. background. So I, I enjoyed um, listening to when you were on with Sarah and Julie. I love them yes. from uh, Suspenders Unbuttoned. So mm -hmm. that was fun. And they always, 
I mean, Julie, Julie's brain amazes me because she's so knowledgeable about so many things. And then she just fires it off. She's like a genius. And I remember um, learning from that podcast that you have like a theatrical background. Like that is where you started, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yes. So how is it that from theater now you're you're in movies? Like, was that a conscious decision or did it just happen? It's sort of a mixture. Um, I did. My, my background is theater. So mm -hmm. um, I was always exposed to the arts growing up, um, getting to go see shows Mm -hmm. uh, when I was little, because Bath is sort of a launching pad for a lot of West End shows. So I was always exposed there. My parents loved the arts. And then we would always do sort of annual musicals as part of school. And I continued up right through high school and um, was doing yeah musicals throughout, um, doing a little bit of dance here and there as well. And then when I graduated, uh, my brother and I were just sort of, we we're both actors together. And um, we did a lot of local community theater and then we were like, well, we want to study this, you know, at post-secondary level, uh, continue, like, we're going to become actors sort of thing. So we auditioned for various programs and then we both got accepted into Toronto Metropolitan Theater School. Mm -hmm. and, um, one of our graduate class was 18 of us all together. So my brother and I were two of those. those oh, wow. So a uh, four year BFA program and, um, learning a wide range of different styles of acting and so forth. And you kind of leave with your own method by the end of it. You take what works for you, what doesn't mm -hmm. and so forth. And then just kind of launch into the auditioning world. And then um, I fell into video games actually mm -hmm. straight out of school, um, which is motion capture. Um, and it's sort of a hybrid between theater and uh, TV film I found. And then uh, just continuing from there, I was auditioning for theater, you know, repertory companies and so forth. And then just it was more the TV and film that kind of is where I kept getting repeated work. And then here I am now. So a few years <laughs> now, um, do you have like do you have like a favorite or what are your favorites? Like, because I saw you, you've been in quite a bit. I even, um, some people like, this is one of our guests. His name is Timothy. He said that he saw that you were in Assassin's Creed and Rain and thought that that was very interesting. But you have other movies and you've been leads in other movies, but not for Hallmark. This is your first lead, right? That's correct. So my first leave with Hallmark. So. Yes. So it, like, you know, when we're done here, people are going to want to look you up if they haven't already. So do you have any of your favorite, like maybe you have your favorite setting or you have a favorite character or one of your um, movies that you're in or a role that you played, any favorites you want to, you're very proud of and you want us to go search out and watch. <laughs> yeah, that's my, my first lead role was a movie called Christmas on Fifth Avenue. Yes. And it really holds a special place for me. I've, Sounds like you might have seen it, Roxanne. So I'm gonna put this in the chat. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, so that that was one of my um my favorites because it's it was just like a huge learning curve for me. I had a wonderful co-star. Um, the crew, the the company that I've worked with numerous times, they've been so good to me and they've trusted me with so much um work and opportunity, and I'm always grateful to them. And it was sort of the big first push like they knew when they saw me four years before they're like we think she's going to be one of our leads one day yeah. and they fostered me up and so it was really just a, a wonderful experience all together working with beautiful cast members and getting to know them and then and feeling the pressure of being you know uh what they call number one on a call sheet yeah. so they lead and and learning from that how you really don't have much time at all to yourself in between you know you out of one scene, you're getting reprocessed, hair, makeup, wardrobe, rehearsing, you know, um, blocking, shooting a next scene and so forth. So it's kind of go, 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 go for um, a few weeks on these on these productions. But it was I loved every single second of it. Oh, nice. All right. So I put that in there. And um, I think Rona, she's with us and she says, um, I saw it and it was great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And another one is uh, Santa's Got Style, which came out this last Christmas cycle. And it was the same company, uh, a company called Brain Power Studio. And that one was really fun. Um, just it was me, gorgeous costumes. Um, again, wonderful cast. A lot of the same crew that I'd worked with before. How oh, nice. It's like a, a different type of character than what I was used to playing. Mm -hmm. um, it was really, 
it was a really, really fun experience. So, and I really liked how it ended up finished the finished product. So I was very proud of that one. So very nice. Now, did you watch that and cringe? Because you said you cringe <laughs> when you watch it. <laughs> uh, here and there, perhaps. I think I'm usually like no face and so forth. So um, I was. I, I cringe. I feel I cringe slightly less perhaps now. Maybe that's sort of a, a thing I'm growing out of after seeing myself on film in, enough times. <laughs> now, I saw this beautiful photo shoot um, on People Exclusive. I think that's what it was. And you were you were in it. It was for one of your movies, I think. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember? Very blue sweater. Very light blue sweater. Yes. In front of a fireplace. Yes. 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 Now, um, like, did you ever do any modeling or do you do any modeling? Because that looked like a model picture for me. No, no, no. That was um, our on-set photographer, um, young guy named Cameron. That was Christmas on Fifth Avenue. Oh. Um, it's probably one of the reasons I probably look okay in the pictures because I wasn't aware there was a camera going like click, click, click. Okay. All right. That makes it, sense. Sometimes get like a little bit awkward in front yeah. of a photo camera. Um. I, I work with a great photographer that does my headshots and sort of the only person that has the patience to deal with me sometimes. But that was, um, yeah, a still when I was doing a scene working with Olivier in that one. Oh, so, that's cute. And I think I've got one where I've got a blooper and I'm like laughing and staring mm -hmm. right down the barrel, staring at Cam, who was like, taking pictures. I and think model, I'm, I'm too, like, I, I mean, as I understood, I was always too small. I'm 5'5", five five, so... You know what? I feel like that's for runway models when they would say that because there are so many different heights and sizes now for modeling. And but I just thought and it makes sense since you said that it was like you didn't realize it because it was beautiful to me because you look so relaxed. And I was like, oh, you must do modeling because it was a night. It was really a nice photo. I liked it. Oh, thank you so much. It's very right. sweet. And yeah. no. I do not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, am, I am getting better. Like every, I might say that now, um, every film that I've worked on since the lead, you always have what are called gallery shoots and that's mm -hmm. the posters and then any mm -hmm. other photos that they might want to use along the way. And so when it came to the one for Hallmark, which I sh shot this uh, just in December, um, I, I learned from working with a few male co-stars that were actually models to move. So I was like trying to remember to move while the camera was going at the same time. But, you know, every, even then I still sometimes like get locked into a position and so forth. So it's a, it's all learning. But I guess it, it kind of feels unnatural though, right? Just moving around to what? Is there music playing or not? <laughs> I learned to have music. Yeah. Good. Music can like help. And if it's like 80s music, I'm great because I love myself some 80s music. <laughs> So it, yeah, a little bit of movement just keeps it from, from getting stiff. So it's all right. Good. Good tips. Now, um, so now here you are, you're a lead in homework, but that, that this isn't your first movie. This is your second, right? Is it number two? Okay. Because your first was Christmas Carousel, correct? Right. Yeah. Yes. In uh, 2020, I worked on Christmas Carousel. So it was my and first homework. Yes. And did you learn anything from those? Oh, you were with a good cast. Did you learn anything? We learned so much. I remember uh, we were filming up in Northern Ontario and I remember arriving and um, watching Neil Bledsoe work. Love him. Oh my gosh. He's, he is the sweetest man. That he is. Biggest gentleman. Um, just gorgeous, gorgeous human. And he we, we were all on, it was the very first day of the shoot and it was a, a scene where he's doing a speech. Um, and for those who might've seen it, he's doing a speech where he, you can see that he's battling with what his passion is, mm -hmm. what his uh, responsibility is as the future uh, prince, uh, future king. And I remember watching him work and I, I pick up tips every so often. Like I like to watch other actors work. I'm like, okay, so that's how you do it. If, you know, when you're doing that part of a scene, you actually have no one else watching you. It's just a camera, but you're pretending that you're, you know, speaking to right. crowds and so forth. Just little tit tit tats I'd take along the way. But um, I just remember that the strong character choices he was making right from the get go. And I was just in awe of it, you know, 
Uh, sometimes as a supporting role, you don't have as much material to work off of. So it's a little bit harder for you to make the choices. But watching him working and just straight away, I could see I could see the character of Whisker coming through. I was I was in awe. And then he's just, he's just so sweet as well. And I remember he had a really long shoot day and they were just filming a little conversation scene where I'm supposed to be on the phone. Mm -hmm. And we would filmed that again the first day of shooting and I had been there as audio for him just because I wanted to see and learn and, and I'd already been wrapped for the day but I was happy to kind of stay around and um, when it came to doing my part of that sequence which was probably about 12 days later he stayed behind as well and Aww. lines sitting on an, a chair you know 12 feet from me mm -hmm. and I, just, I was so touched by that because he didn't have to be there it was I was the closing I'm pretty sure I was the last scene of the day and he'd already had a really long day at it but he thought he was so generous that he stayed behind in order to do the audio whereas usually it would be you know an assistant director reading the lines or a script supervisor reading the lines to you you're not ever working really live with an actor when you're doing a, um, a phone scene but he stayed so I was very touched by that as well. I think that maybe because he's due for a lead with Hallmark again, I think he should do a movie with you. Oh my God. Let's put that into the universe, Roxanne. I, Neil, I think that would be great. Wonderful. And I would be honored. Hallmark. Oh. All right. Um, I love it. Yes, absolutely. But he is such a gem. Like, right. I would absolutely love that. Now you take all that you learned and you channel it, and now you're the lead in um the newest movie that's coming out. I can't wait. So I was so taken with the uh, title because Valentine, Nebraska is a real place. It is. Right? It's did you look it up? I, I know that um, Markian did. Did you do any little research beforehand? I did. Yes. As soon as I got the script, um. I, I looked it up because so I was like, is this like, is this actually a real place? You know, or is mm -hmm. it just saying it's set in Nebraska and just making up a town called Valentine? And it was. And there's a few really, really sweet facts about the town um, that they do have an annual Valentine parade. And they're also the town splits a time zone, which I thought was really sweet. Like their main street, one side is an hour ahead of the other. Mm -hmm. But the post office in the town, they keep that at half an hour between the two so if it's one o'clock one side and it's 12 o'clock the other they keep it at half past 12 and i thought that was really sweet very very um you know a, a cute little nuance to the town and everything so i i did research it beforehand and i did know that there was a place called valentine and the high street looked very similar to what we use in the in the movie which, which is a nice thing it does still have a real small town feel because i was looking at the promos they don't even have three thousand people in their town but they have it going on i contacted them and <laughs> i had i had some people i had um one of the merchants who of course she has a beautiful boutique downtown and um i had her husband and the mayor on standby because the mayor he's a young guy his name's kyle not only does he own the bank and have branches and is the mayor, he also is like, I think, a third generation rancher, third or fourth, and he helps out. But he was that night. It was Valentine's night. So they came on for Valentine, on Val which was so cool. Oh, how lovely. And he um, was coaching a basketball game. And my guest, um, Whitney, her husband was also there. And every now and then we could hear her phone ding and people would ask questions and they would be answering them through the phone and she would be talking to us about it when I'm talking with my hands. <laughs> and it was fun. It was like, because we're so excited for the movie and that it was a real place. We wanted to get all those cool tidbits like you were. Oh, you, actually, you actually got to share um, some things that we never even touched on in their interview, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So it's cool that you actually looked it up because I would have, because I would really want to, if it's real, you want to do it justice, even though I know you can't control that. That's like the writers and the directors. So we're real excited to see, like Hallmark is really known for small town romance, you know, and and I know they're branching out and they're doing other things, but every now and again, they'll come back to their roots. And this movie reminds me of their roots because here the two of you are in a car taking a road trip. <laughs> And so tell us about your character. Her name's Olivia, right? 
that's correct. Yes. So right. um, Olivia is she's very passionate about uh, life, her family, her hometown. But along the way, in her pursuit of a career as an artist, she's lost her inspiration. And she's living in New York at the beginning of the film. And the city is really kind of stamped her into the ground. She's feeling a bit downtrodden. She's um, lost her artistic, I guess, inspiration. Um, and she's sort of underneath it all missing home. And then just things keep sort of falling apart a little bit. So she's staying with her friend at the time uh, the movie starts um, because her other apartment, she's lost her other apartment along the way. And then everything kind of compounds. So not only is she sort of doing a, a job, she's working as a server on the side, which doesn't fulfill her in any kind of way. She has an opportunity, she thinks, to meet um, a gallery owner who has a really great reputation for helping to launch the careers of various artists. So she sees it as her chance. She's like, yes, you know what? I'm, I feel that, you know, this is my moment. Everything's been leading up to this. The world's been challenging me to kind of like push on through. Right. I'm going to meet her finally. And things don't go according to plan because George, she meets George. He's played by Mark Ian. And um, after that, more things fall apart. Her best friend um, ends up leaving New York to move to Chicago. So then her other apartment is gone. So she's really left with nothing else to do, but kind of return home. Um, and her sister uh, back in her hometown is planning her, their annual Valentine's Day parade. And it's her first ever time of organizing it. It's always been in the uh, control and the, in the very capable hands of an, of another elderly uh, lady in the community and uh, so her sister's feeling a lot of pressure as well and wants to make sure that this you know this parade knocks the socks off the locals and she's got you know big boots to fill and so Olivia ends up returning home to help her out and then also along the way try and figure out her life choices. So you're in this wonderful little car um, it was at, at 1972 what is it? Ford Mercury Cougar. That's it. <laughs> And um, the, it's a real car. <laughs> I know. Did you get to drive it at all? No, I didn't dare. I mean, the stick. Sh I don't drive stick shift, even though okay. I'm from the UK. I learned to drive in North America. So I drive okay. in kilometers. Sorry. I know that we're talking to some people in the States. Kilometers. Okay. We're good. We're good. We love <laughs> you. England's in miles. And I never learned standards. So um, I did get to sit in the car with the... Um, the young gent that owned the vehicle, uh, Matt. And so at first, like, when the car is sort of, sit, if it's sitting in neutral or if it's sort of like, you know, waiting to kind of go, it's, it, I would call it a little bit of a bone rattler. I mean, you're sort of like, cool. bouncing, you're like, oh, okay. You know, suspension's kind of gone. But when that engine moves and he's driving forward and we had this little shot where, uh, we're supposed to be sort of arriving at the hotel in Chicago and um, that car. Ooh. I, I understand why people love vehicles so much. I, you know, I never really get men with my oh, men in their cars kind of <laughs> I was in that one and you feel the right. power of it. I was like, you know, I'm like, I'm getting it now. I'm getting it kind of <laughs> going sitting in the front passenger seat being like, this is, this is great guys. This is great. And it's a, yeah, a beautiful, beautiful car. It looks like it's in like, great condition too, says me, the non-mechanic, but. <laughs> it does look beautiful. Actually, I can add to the stream um, real quick. There's a, a bit of it in the background with you, with it's the two of you, correct? Yes. Now, is this, are you supposed to be in Valentine here or no? Yes. No, that is our arrival. Um, so that's supposed to be the main street. I get um, George Markian to stop um, upon coming up on the the main street and I just sort of get out and smell the air of my hometown and we are in Valentine. My goodness. So Valentine, I was curious if Valentine's Day made um made it into the movie or if it was just because of the name of it. That was what I was curious about. But you said it is to sell it for the celebration. So are you going to go home and help out the sister? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we go home and help her with a few challenges along the way. And mm -hmm. um, there is a, a parade um, featured in the film as well. So cool. yeah. now 
Um, I, I know there are some fun behind the scenes stories. There's one that has to do with the dog. And then if I'm not mistaken, mm. I, I think there's one that has to do, see, this is a promo. I didn't steal it anywhere. This is something. And I'm like, you know, when they show something like, you know, that frozen drink in your hand, there's got to be a story behind this. Is there a story behind that frozen drink? Oh, that's not, I, that's not an edible drink whatsoever i'm pretty sure i could turn that upside down and it would not move and I, I remember one of the takes um it was it was sort of a juggling act between marquee and myself it was very 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 cold it must have been minus 25 or so oh, wow. and we're not i mean we have as many thermals on as we could possibly take but we right. don't I didn't have gloves uh throughout the film or anything like that and so we're trying to kind of warm ourselves up in front of this like, heater and everything in between takes and as we go into the embrace, I had, I think the card in this hangs, it gives me a card and this uh, milkshake in this one. But of course, as I go around to kiss, the milkshake sort of turned upside down. So they're like, yeah, can you, can you put it in the other hand? And so it was all like a master of like juggling. And so in the end it ends up that I could put my hand around the back of his neck and then also the strawberry milkshake, which is a little bit of a, a, a theme, a running theme of the, the film as well. Okay. Um, little feature too. All right. So we'll be paying attention to the strawberry milkshake, which of course as a prop is not real, but, but it's part of the theme. Okay. That's cool. Cause I'm like, Oh, I know if they put something like that in there, it has to be somewhere. But I was curious. So there are many of us that are here that love when calls the heart. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And they had an ice cream parlor. They've had ice cream on there before, but they had, they added a whole ice cream parlor last season and everybody was always eating ice cream. And we're like, what in the world is it? Cause you know that it, it can't be real. And they do eat it here. It's mashed potatoes. Yes. And sometimes so I think it might have been. Yes. And they confirm what it was. The, the mashed potatoes and when went across the heart. Yes. Because yes. We've had the actors on and talk about it. One time they had like a, a ice cream fight and it was yogurt and they said it stunk after a while on their clothing. <laughs> I, you know, the, the tricks on set are really, really interesting to learn because when whenever there's a scene of people eating, mm -hmm. like the number of takes that you do and then the number of different angles and shots. I did a scene in a film once where I was supposed to eat orange creamsicle. Oh, I can't, I could, oh, I wouldn't be able to eat it now. No. It's, it's just sort of like, and then you start to realize that you're like, oh, I've committed. Like, I've got to get these shots. I've got to get some kind of, you know, yeah. Uh, get the shots sort of equal in every single way. I usually grab the ice cream there sort of thing. So you end up learning. And um, yeah, I have heard mashed potato. Is he, mashed potato is used a lot in commercials as well for when no. you're advertising ice cream. What was in there that you could turn it upside down and it wouldn't fall? Was it something solid? I, I don't think it was food at all. At um, all. It looked great. Like it looked so sort of like the whipped cream was perfect. I would have to ask uh, Christina, the head of props for that, because yeah. it's sort of um, it was it was so cold that they kind of were like, you know, handing us things at the last minute and for us to be able to film. So I never, never found out completely what that one was. It looked fabulous, <laughs> but I did get to like, for a little bit of um milkshake which was strawberry ice cream um mm -hmm. in one of one of the scenes featured it was on our first day of filming and uh yeah i had a fun behind the scenes <laughs> shot from that for sure we're yeah. actually gonna crave it we're gonna wind up craving it by the time i had strawberry milkshake last night just saying oh, okay like, i don't think you can ever go wrong with strawberry milkshake but yeah there's say like, this one particular take we were doing of it um, I'm supposed to be with my sister in this booth and I'm supposed to be all mad at George and you'll see in the film. And then I go to, uh, she said, you know, you can't eat just strawberry milkshake. You know, you have to eat something real kind of thing. And, um, I kind of look up at her and I'm like, make me. And the straw got stuck to the top of my mouth. It was paper straw. And so I had to make this horrendous looking face to kind of get it unstuck. And um, I just kind of continued. And then another character played by Andrew Davis is supposed to enter. And all I heard from the back was the director, Stefan Brogren, who's incredible man. All I heard from the back was, uh, can we do that again? But maybe just a little less tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just couldn't, we couldn't stop laughing. The whole of the, the set erupted in laughter. 
because the way, you know, oh, so wrong, it's so wrong. I was like, it's not that kind of movie, okay? Like, okay, let's just redo that. <laughs> so that would be definitely one of the uh, fun behind the scenes stories as well, along yeah. the way. I love it. We love hearing all of that good stuff. Yeah. And did you, did you almost squish a dog or think you squished a dog? <laughs> I, I thought I did. And thankfully, yeah. the near squishing of Shorzy did not happen. Um, yes, we worked with a, a little chihuahua on this film that actually belongs to the director. So we've had mm -hmm. like a little cameo feature. And um, she's so sweet. She has no teeth. And so whenever she's sort of staring at you, her tongue's hanging out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. She's a very, very sweet dog. And um, yeah, we had this shot where I'm supposed to, my first arrival back home, and I enter into our house, like family home, and I'm going like, hey, where is everybody? And it was supposed to be a shot of me entering. Shorty comes down the stairs to greet me first, and then followed by my nephew, who's played by uh, Bayan Hoffman. And we're supposed to have this big, like, hug and end up falling to the ground and like this bundle of, like, crazy family love. And then my sister, played by Cara Duncan, runs in, and we're all kind of rolling around being like, I love you so much, oh, we've missed you. But the first take, <laughs> of this scene um bane and i are hugging and we think shorty's gone we think she's cleared the frame everything and we go down to drop to the ground in this hug and shorty decides to walk back into the shop oh, no. just as i come down and i had no idea she was even there and all you just hear this like oh sort of noise which i didn't hear in the action of it happening right right but just the set went pin drop silence okay. and usually you know that there's some movement there's some whispering and so forth on set mm -hmm. and I thought I just missed my mark I thought I didn't hit where I was supposed to for the um director of photography so I was like oh sorry sorry you did hire a professional here I swear like I'll do it again kind of thing and then afterwards they were everyone was sort of clasping at their chest sort of going like because they thought that the dog was dead. Oh, <laughs> no. Ended up wandering back into the scene again. She was absolutely fine. So, and she's <laughs> used to, like, when you're that small, he's, like, he, yeah. she's used to being, like, getting out of the way fast to save her. Oh. So. oh, I love it. I love it. And I can see with the tongue, that's a common thing that happens with yeah, them. I know. Sweet. She's so sweet herself. And, yeah, you just sort of look at her and you're like, oh, it's even more levels of, like, <laughs> <laughs> now, the young man that the um that you're talking about that plays your nephew if i am not mistaken i think that um he is also a character on the way home he plays um um a character named danny and he's there's an older danny because the way home flashes back and i think he's the young danny from like 1999 okay if I'm not mistaken, he's a gorgeous kid, light eyes, dark hair, correct? Um, his he's got sort of brown, dark brown eyes. Okay. But he's he's mixed, like like myself. Like mixed I thought that he had light eyes for some reason. I don't know why, but he has like well in his pictures that they show us, or we get to see, he's got like yes. this curl, curly hair. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. a beautiful little boy. I did work with him last year as well, about eight months before. Oh, um, wow. Had a little role in Six Degrees of Santa. And um, I remember oh. just how much he grew in those months in between. And when I had my cast read through and I saw that he was part, he was playing my nephew, I was like, oh, yay. Because I got to reunite with his mom on set and she's lovely oh. as well. So that was really nice to get to read. now. Literally a family reunion, pretty much. I know it, it must be fun when you get to, you know, see, even if it's like you said, crew, you there was your crew that you've worked with before, then you don't have any um, surprises. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. Takes the nerves away a yes. little bit because even my first Hallmark film, um, I knew the first assistant director, mm -hmm. so that made it so much more comfortable for me going in. Um, I love him, Rocco Gismondi. Like, please, I would love to work with him again. But I got to do two movies almost back to back with him. He's incredible at his job. And so that was already a comfort for me going in because I knew that I was working with, you know, high, like, you know, Hallmark actors, Rachel Boston, Neil Bledsoe. Um, mm -hmm. It was a large set and it was it filmed in 2020. So we still had very, very strict lockdown rules in, mm -hmm. in Canada. And so I knew that it was going to be, it was a bigger budget and so forth than I had worked with um, for quite a while. So 
having knowing that I had someone on set already that I'd worked with before made it so much more comfortable for me going in. And there there's a, that we can add that to the mix for the new movie that you're going to be on, be in. <laughs> like he could do be, you know, directing the next movie. <laughs> that would be nice, right? Right? That's Let's what we're that also into the universe. So <laughs> reunite with Rocco Gismondia's first AD. Yes. Neil Bledsoe, directed by Stefan Brogren, because yes. also incidentally, he was the first ever director that I worked with in TV. So see, it's a package. It's going to happen. I could just <laughs> manifest it. <laughs> so this movie is like I'm excited for it because it it's a, a cute rom com. You're riding, riding, taking the car ride, mm -hmm. and um, it's a pretty far car ride. So I am sure that things are going to happen along the way, which I am excited for. And um, before we look at some of the questions or the comments that our viewers have made, I wanted to ask you, just like in the theme of the movie, um, what's your favorite thing about Valentine's Day? My favorite thing um, about Valentine's Day, I think, is just that it's become, it's all-encompassing love. Yes. So I love that I hear about Galentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, because, like, you know, we need to, like, as as women and as uh, you know, friends that we have day to day, you know, we need to love each other. We have, we all go through sort of like very similar um, struggles and so forth in, in life. So I love that Valentine's day, it's not just about, um, you know, life partners or anything like that. It, it's all encompassing. It involves your best friends for me, like my family, uh, my two dogs and everything like, um, yeah, I think that would be my favorite thing about Valentine's. I like that. That's a good answer. That's a nice love answer. Everyone and love for <laughs> just, yeah, life really sort of have a few moments to think on how lucky we are to be where we are living in, in the world and that we can just slow down for a couple minutes and just in, enjoy being with one another and just really think back, like, you know, who's important to me in life and why and you know, the, the choice to keep people in your lives and so forth. So let's just celebrate love in general. I like it. That's a good answer. It's something, it, all the other holidays have other meanings behind it. And this one is just because you love someone in whatever way. Love. Yeah. yeah. In whatever yeah. form it, it takes and however anyone sort of defines it is yeah. okay on that day. Now, what about road tripping? If you were going on a road trip, what do you consider to be essential? Like what's something you must take on a road trip? So I I do love a road trip. Um, I, I think I'd want to do one this year up into uh, to Newfoundland, in <gasps> which means I got to go on a ferry to get over there because okay. I want to see dogs. My dogs are my essentials mm -hmm. um, on a road trip and a good playlist. Now, do, do you music by any chance i think markian kind of hinted at that this and it was accidental that i said it but often people fight over what you listen to on the radio when you're at, on a road trip and he's like maybe maybe that's in the storyline is it in the storyline that you argue over the radio or who controls the radio or the music or or no it's not that it's ever yes you know what yes absolutely he has a bit of a habit of listening to certain types of podcasts okay um, you mentioned okay where yeah. i'm just like please no more no more please i've like i've topped out i can't do any more sort of thing so and then he gives me the choice he's like oh you can pick the next thing i'm like oh, oh, oh there's some romance coming <laughs> that's yes. great Rings of romance. <laughs> We're excited for this. So let's see what everyone's saying over here. I've been starring some things along the way. I'm going to go back. And we do You're have a multitasker, Roxanne. I try. Staring along the way. You go my eyes look like they're going <laughs> all over. <laughs> so Jan says, she has a question for you. Have you ever been in anything with your brother? Oh, I love that you know that I have a brother, Janice. Um, I have, oh wait, I mentioned my brother. Oh my gosh, can you tell it's been a long week there? It's all right. <laughs> um, of course, yes, I mentioned my brother earlier. Um, I have been in a lot of theater shows with my brother 
And um, throughout the school, of course, we, we were working with each other. Since leaving, no, not so much. Like, he really moved into the theater world and he's he's really on the creative side. So he's sort of directing, assistant directing. Uh, he does projection design, photographer as well. And he's got some really exciting um, pieces that he's written in the works as well. So I nice. haven't worked with him since, but we do... Um, I do get to see him like every once in a while and he's always someone that I really turn to um, for feedback. I really appreciate his feedback whenever I'm, I've done a film and he watches it. Um, his feedback is really, really important to me. So I like to have his value, what he says, like, like, cause he knows what he's talking about. So if he's going to give you, cr uh, I guess, constructive criticism, you would listen. <laughs> we were like that throughout the school as well. Cause we always had, uh, each other and of course we're never going to compete for roles so I was sort of his third eye perspective and then same as vice versa and he he knows me he knows like who I am probably better than I even I do so he can really tell um, he, he knows my discomforts he he knows where I feel the most comfortable and where I would second question myself in terms of work and everything so he's at my one of my biggest supports I'll phone him if I have a rough time on a set or something, or if I'm confused about anything and he's my best friend. So I'll phone him up and be like, just give me perspective. <laughs> is the age difference between you like a year or two? What is it? Two years. I'm two, two years, years older than him. Years. He's a baby. And then I have an older sister as well. Oh, so you're in the middle. In the middle. I'm the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Christina says, is it hard for you to change your um, accent when you're acting? Um, not so much. If I have a script, like sometimes people will challenge me and they're like, oh, you, you're English. Oh, oh, you're an actor. Can you do a North American accent? I'm like, yes, I can. And they go, like, okay, do one. And for me, I'm like, that is me exposed in that moment. So I'm like, if you give me a script, yes, I can read that in a North American accent. But if I'm doing it on the fly in an improv situation, cat myself will slip back out. So I always call it my English Tourette's. Um, if I'm on a set and if I get too cold, which was the instance in this film a few times, my top lip will freeze. And oh, then if my top lip doesn't move properly, I can't do a North American accent because North American, like your mouths move more in North America is what I have found between the two accents. And um, so I would, I'd have a sound engineer uh, <laughs> working, David on this one. And he would, I would have him listen out. And if like a, my English Tourette's came out, which usually came with the cold weather and everything. They would just sort of be like, just watch that word kind of thing. So, but I, I do, I can do the American accent. Yes. If I have a script. Okay. That's, I love it. So um, Deb says, so no accent for the movie, a Nebraskan accent, I guess. Right. I didn't have to do Nebraskan accent. It was just general North American. And I feel like, that's that's kind of I didn't I don't always hear mm -hmm. in a, a specific accent for Nebraska. Yeah. Um, I I do for parts of Illinois and okay. more of a Midwestern. But I, I mean that's just so. I did research some accents mm -hmm. because I thought that they might give me the challenge. Um, right, right. There is a specific saying that we say throughout the film, uh, which is sort of a greeting and um everyone from valentine says this specific greeting um i did research beforehand nebraskan accents there's a, a website i used to use when i was at the school and it it shows um people read various sort of parts of a script and um and these are non-actors and they're doing their accent and it's all based on you know their age their where they live in the the um state for for Amer uh, for Nebraska there and I didn't hear too much of an accent and I there were three or four different variations of yeah. it like, yeah. nothing more than I would just consider North American just general North American so no Nebraskan lilt or twang for me on this one <laughs> you're okay your lip will be okay <laughs> <laughs> that's just the cat twang <laughs> <a> faux pas. <laughs> so um 
there are several people here that are very much when calls the heart fans mm -hmm. and Jan is saying, um, she says she's thinking of when calls the heart. And so many think that Lucas's unseen friend is younger. Wouldn't Catherine be perfect? So there's a, a care. Do you watch when calls the heart? Do you know what we're, what we're talking about? Sure you mean, yes. um, I have, yeah. funny, I've never had an audition for that show, but I've had auditions for their spinoffs. Okay. Um, when Hope Cross. Yes. When Hope yes. Okay. I had auditions for that. So in um in this series, he has a friend who is from New Orleans and she is French. And we never, I know, we never have gotten a chance to see her. I don't think she's older than he is. I think she's the same age or possibly slightly older, slightly younger. And they're suggesting, wouldn't you be great for that part? Stop it. Thanks, Janice. Uh, I can I can do Cajun, I'm sure. Cajun accent. I could be from the South. <laughs> Please, yes. Omar, come knocking. <laughs> <laughs> that's that would be wonderful absolutely wonderful so i mean let's manifest that too Janice. okay so, Janice. so robin this is robin's reaction to the the dog story <laughs> yes. he he is good i actually have um the director sent me that particular shot because i still had no clues to what had happened i just know that I, there was the dog was nearly squished so i do actually have like the shot of uh, when Shorty came back in and from how it looked on the monitors. Right, right. It looked like I smushed the dog. Kind oh. of just ran straight okay. out as my head came down. So um, no, the dog was, the dog is safe. The dog is well. <laughs> the dog prospers. Yeah. Shorty is all dead. <laughs> Jan, Jan's also saying um, she loves that you have a wonderful relationship with your brother. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very lucky in that way. Yeah, my brother is just, he's wonderful. I was just texting him earlier, like today. So we, we talk most days and he's just, he's my rock. Is he going to be watching, you think, Saturday when you're watching? I, I think so. He's in Montreal right now working. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he has access to TV. Okay. But, um, he and is always at my number one support. So no doubt he will, he's always really good at like, finding things online too. So I'm sure he's going to end up finding it. Are you, are you going to have like a little premiere party or are you just relaxing at home with your dogs watching? Um, probably have my dogs. Cause my, my parents actually came to visit me on set. Um, they drove up from Toronto to Ottawa. So I got to have my dogs come and visit me and, uh, they came to see me work. Um, so I'll probably be watching it with my parents and my two dogs and you know, I'm never sure about having friends around if it's a premiere. I'm just sort of like, oh, let me let me see it first, and then I'll decide if you guys are going to watch it. So, yeah. and I'll probably have some like people that I know. They they usually send me little pictures of them watching me on camera or on screen, which is always very very touching. I will definitely be live tweeting, and I know homework will. Mark Ian is too. I'm not sure of the rest of the cast. Do something. I just don't really understand how it works. <laughs> okay. And you know what? Many of us don't, including myself. And it can be um, a scary place. But when Hallmark, it's a Saturday um, evening and Hallmark's out there tweeting, we have we tweet and we retweet. And then it's really cool to see that you get the hashtag for the movie to trend. It's almost like your goal. Oh. Are we trending, you know, and, and they'll retweet that and they'll ask, where are you if you're watching and people can send a snap or a, a gif or oh, whatever. Yeah. So it's fun. It's, yeah. it's like you're watching together and you're connected. I always make sure I watch live as often as I can, but mm -hmm. I also record it because when you're watching and you're tweeting, sometimes you miss things. I can't multitask. That's why I had to admire you for marking <laughs> things starring things at the same time you're having to listen to me <laughs> I was like how did you oh, it's okay. I, I try now before we say good night there is a question one more it's just a little cute general question that, um they're curious about your dogs yes my babies um I have a black labrador called Evie and uh, she's five and I have what's called a cavachon so he's half cavalier king charles spaniel half bichon today. he's like this white fluff ball um called uh teddy because he looks like a teddy bear well, teddy bear yeah they're they love each other uh he's a year and a half she's five and she's basically his mom 
and they're oh. babies. I know dogs are the best. I love dogs. Love them. Okay, so we're going to be sure to tune in this Saturday. Welcome to Valentine. Um, and it's at eight in Canada and in the United States Eastern. Um, your channel is the W channel, right? Okay. And we're the Hallmark channel, right? All right. Yay. Sorry, and Peacock as well. Yes, that's true. And you know what else is going to happen? Sunday, they will probably, I didn't look at the schedule. I'm sure someone here has. They will probably like do a, a repeat of it on Sunday and then several times during the month. And I always, I'll check that out and then I'll post that on um, Instagram so people can catch it, catch Love it that you. way too. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for everyone that was listening and along the way. And um, your your questions, your support, I'm so grateful for uh, the opportunities that I've had so far. And I couldn't do it without great teams around me and also people watching the movies as well. Thank you for your support. It really is so touching. I'm so honored and humbled by it. All right. We'll say good night. And then we, you and I can say good night real quick at the afterwards. Good night, everyone. Everyone, thank you. Be sure to check out Instagram and Facebook because I have post I'm going to be posting other little things along the way. <laughs> All right.